Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Crystal and this is my social thread. So today is a Friday Sews vlog, um, first one in August, uh, where I will be discussing what I've done this past week. Um, and first of all, what I'm wearing, it's just the Tilly and the Buttons tab of the t-shirt and a white cotton jersey from Pan Fabrics. Um, and that's the pattern, for those of you that follow me, that I have been obsessed with recently. It's from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. Um, and yeah, so what have I been up to this week? I have been uh, sewing up some dresses, the Sicily wrap dress in collaboration with Judy from Running So and So. I will link down all her details below in the description box. Um, we are going to be posting, or we, we already have, depending on when this goes live, we already have um, posted our photos on Instagram. Again, I'll link um, I'm at my social thread and Judy is running so-and-so uh, and the vlogs should sort of come up um, simultaneously this evening which is a Friday um, so yes Judy how do I know Judy so Judy I first met her through virtually met her uh, through the Jenny Stitches blogging um, team that we're on so we both blog for Jenny uh, who owns Jenny Stitches Fabrics and that's how we first started talking to each other after which we then sort of spilled onto Instagram sort of thing and I have also recently interviewed her for one of my interview series and that will be coming out at some point this month I'm hoping to do it for when she comes back she's currently in Oregon at the moment visiting um, another sewist friend of hers uh, but when she returns I'll hopefully um, release that then um, so yes, Sicily wrap dress. Um, I will show you the pattern. It's a pattern by Mason uh, and it's sorry Sicily slip dress. I keep saying wrap dress, Sicily slip dress and basically you have the two options here. You have the narrow straps with sort of the cowl neck, uh, full length version. When I say full length it's below the knee, sort of a midi length and then you have view B which is just the thicker strap, still got the cowl neck and a high back and a slightly shorter, shorter version there. Um, I have recently made, last month I made the salt water slip and for those of you in the know it's the salt water slip and the Sicily slip dress that have always kind of been um, not competing but sort of are the alternatives for each other and a lot of um, sewists have made both um, and they have sort of shared their pros and cons with regards to each pattern. So with regards to the salt water slip, um, I mean, with regards to both of these dresses, I don't normally wear slip dresses because I don't really show off my shoulders or my chest much. Um, but I thought actually I would give it a go because um, there's so many lovely um, inspirational photos on Instagram where people have worn t-shirts under them. And I thought actually that looks really nice and that is something that I would wear. So with my salt water slip, um, I have made that one. Unfortunately, the uh, attaching of the bias binding around the neck wasn't really for me. Um, and so I thought I'll try the Sicily slip dress, which I have done and um, I do really, really like it. Um, so my first version, I will show you, they're all over here actually. I made four. <laughs> I made four because I liked it so much. So my first version is this one over here. It's made in a lovely viscose, leopard print viscose from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn. Very inexpensive. I think it was like $5.99 a meter. And I bought quite a few. Um, I bought two meters for the Sicily slip dress and then four meters for a wild again, which I'm planning to do in the same fabric. Uh, and this is, I was looking for a leopard print um, fabric for a while, actually. I've seen Ruan has made a salt water slip in a leopard print, and I really, really liked that. Um, and when I found this, it was actually quite difficult to find a leopard print that I liked. And uh, when I found this, I thought it was nice it was good price and also it's slightly different in that the background is like a light white off-white color and normally a leopard print would have um, sort of a dark brown or a black background so I thought that was this is quite um, quite summery which is nice again beautiful viscose lovely floaty and drapey so I'll show you you've got the sort of slim straps there you've got the cow neck bit here so from the side view and then it's the cow neck and that drapes nicely at the front and then the back is um, against the straps um, and it is cut on the bias and the bottom of it I ha instead of hemming it I just use my narrow stitch um, my three thread uh, narrow stitch on my overlocker all the way um, around the end and I think that works quite well with a slip dress and also with a viscose because you kind of get a bit of a wave which is quite which I like um, for finishing the edges of my dresses and I have also added some ties and um, the dress doesn't come with ties but I find with myself um, I like the ties just to cinch me in at the waist a bit and all I did with the ties is I used the same pattern piece for the straps 
and I lengthened it by um, 48 inches because I liked it. I like it tied at the back and then at the front as well in, in a bow. And I think that looks quite nice. Um, I'll pop up a picture of myself wearing this one. Um, and then let's go back to the pattern. So basically, um, the Sicily slip dress, the reason I wanted to try it is Adele, Sofa Serenity, um, and also Tamlin, Sewn on the Time. They've made both of these dresses and I've watched their pros and cons and their, um, their reviews of them. And just by the mere fact that this is cut in the bias just sounds so luxurious. I just thought I have to try. I've never made anything cut in the bias. I remember back in the 90s, my mum used to have like a bias cut skirt and what have you I've never made anything like that and um, so it was a, a nice um to be working with something different in the sense that I've never cut on the bias never sewn on the bias and the instructions are very very good in, in respect of that um first and foremost let me go through the size chart with you so instead of sort of sizes they um instead of sort of like six eight ten numbers they have size a to size j um uh, inches wise size A is a bust of 33 inches waist of 25 inches all the way up to a size J which is a bust of 54 inches and a waist of 46 inches I went for the size 4 size 4 which is a D I don't know why I put size 4 in there I went for a size D which is a 39 bust um, and a waist of 31 inches my waist is not 31 inches it's a bit bigger than that I've, I'm, I'm quite thick at the waist so it's a bit bigger than that but because it does say at the beginning because the dress is cut on the bias um not to worry too much about the waist because th the way the fabric is cut in the bias it kind of shapes to your body which again just sounds so lovely um and so i went for my bust size rather than my waist size hence the size d and that was actually a lovely fit so i'm very happy i went with that size uh going forward um right this it this is the main part so when you cut item when you cut fabric on a bias you never cut it on the fold so it says that they never cut it on the fold it always has to be cut um opened out um and then with regards to the bias it explains to you how to find the bias so this would be the selvage of your fabric um where it's um attached onto the machine when they make the fabric and this is the length of the fabric up here and the bias is basically 45 degree angle to your selvage so what I did with my fabric so normally I would cut my fabric sort of if my fabric is this way I would cut my pattern pieces this way so all I did on my cutting table or my cutting board is I turned my fabric at a 45 degree angle and then I laid my pattern pieces straight down as well and that's how I found um was the best way for me to cut on the bias and then also the other important thing is when you cut your front piece uh, on one on one bias you have to cut your back piece on the op on the opposing bias um because if you cut it on both the same way apparently it would kind of be tilted to one side so if you cut the front piece that way the back piece the other way uh, then it kind of balances each other out with the with the bias i hope that makes sense <laughs> so oh look it shows you here so um, the back, that's the front piece cut on that side and then the back piece cut on the other side and then uh, the facing for the back and the straps are also cut on the bias but it doesn't really matter which way you cut that. Obviously my fabric um, couldn't do that. I don't know how, um, if there's fabric wide enough to do that. This piece basically is quite short because it only starts from the armpits downwards and then you add the straps. This piece, however, um, this is the armpit area here. This is the shoulders and then you've got the facing for the cowl all in one so this piece is actually really really long so um i did have um you do need i think quite a wide um wide width of fabric does it say let me have a look i'm not sure if it says um, but yeah i think you wouldn't be able to get it on a 115 centimeter width um fabric i don't think also um when you um i've never sewn anything with mason before uh, i've never used this pattern company before so i think another tip is to always check what the seam allowance is because um in the uk i think the um what's it called the standard seam allowance is five eighth of an inch um and some countries because it does say does it say standard no, there was another um, pattern I just made recently, the honeycomb dress by Cocoa Crafts, Cocoa Wawa Crafts, and it says use the standard seam allowance of 
three eighths of an inch. So obviously in, in the country, I believe it's a European country of some sort. I'm not sure which one, I'm sorry. Um, but their standard is three eighths of an inch. So always make sure that you know um, what the um, seam allowance is of that pattern. Most of the UK ones, if it's a standard um, seam allowance, it is five eighths. But what you don't want to do is um, if you, um, obviously the patterns are cut to a specific seam allowance. Um, and if you get the wrong one, um, the dress will either be too small or too big. Um, so yeah, that's another important thing. Apart from that, everything was really, really quite straightforward. Uh, with regards to the straps, I did buy, bear with me if I can find it, ah, this amazing set here. It's the, the prim turning set. Um, and I'm sure you've seen this all before. I don't really have fabric to show you, but um, basically um, you, um, when you make your straps, you fold them, uh, that's just, oh, I've got a piece here. When you make your straps, you fold them uh, wrong sides to get right sides together. Um, so it's like this, and then you would sew that way all the way down, and then you would trim the excess. And what you would do with this is you would put the it's like a straw bit here. You would put that through your your loop, and then you would use the um, metal turner bit to go through your tube can't really show it at the moment I don't have one if I had one I would be able to do it and then that just and then you roll it up and then you will just be left with a lovely beautifully turned um strap I think they call them rouleau no this that's something else a beautifully turned strap and it's so super super easy and they come with different sizes and I think the set was like six pounds definitely worth double that or triple that <laughs> in terms of the benefits it has um so you've got um the thicker tube thinner tube and the smallest tube so the smallest one has a metal poker because it's quite uh, slim and then you've got wooden sort of ones here so that's really really great i totally recommend it uh, so much so that um i as i said earlier i wanted a waist ties with mine and it's a 48 inch waist tie times two and that's a lot of turning if you were to do it manually or however else I used to do it beforehand but with these turners it literally took me a minute to do both of them and it was super super easy actually it's quite fun to do so it's actually something that I looked kind of look forward to whilst normally it's something that I would leave right to the end because it was just like an annoying task to have to turn the the loops over inside each other um, and even with my other patterns that I've had, so when you're making straps, you can either do the loop turning way, or sometimes they'll show you how to do it like a, the bias binding kind of way. So you'd have, um, you'd be, it'd be wrong sides together this time, and then you'd fold them in again on each other. So it's kind of like bias binding, sort of like that. And then you would fold them in on each other and then sew them down. So it's like making a bias binding strip and then sewing it wrong sides together to, to each other um, instead of um, doing the loop turning way. So it's actually already the right way round. Um, and I actually prefer the loop turning way now, which I would never have said prior to me getting this prim set. So I definitely, definitely recommend that. Um, and then the other thing was, oh, okay. So I will show you it from here. So it's very straightforward construction. When you are putting the ties in it, there is a, um, a picture that shows you how to put the ties in. Uh, it's very simple as long as you read the instructions carefully and just look at the pictures for um, just to double check that you're doing the right thing. The one thing that annoyed me a little bit actually was uh, when you put the facing on the back, you're supposed to under stitch the facing to the seam allowance, which is which is fair enough. Um, but where it's got the strap here, you can't under stitch all the way. So I can only under stitch sort of from here up to here because this bit I can't get under it because of the um, the strap likewise for the um, yeah so I will show you in the instructions it says it here here as well ah, so so it shows it here this is the under stitching here you can only under stitch from the armpit up to that point and then from that point all the way at the front of the sorry the facing and then this bit here so these bits here you can't under stitch because of the strap um, and you can't really see it in this fabric but if you were to do it in a plain fabric it would probably annoy you more because um where's my under stitching there's just a little bit here where it's not under stitched so it slightly comes out but i mean that's just a little finicky thing for myself um also just to say i'm i didn't re i didn't do the french seam side seams unfortunately well not unfortunately I, I really don't mind that it's not fr french seamed inside i just did the stitch and an overlock and that was perfectly fine for me so i guess that was one less step to do 
um, but all in all very much like it um, in terms of my notes I do have this little uh, booklet here which Ruan from so um, the Yorkshire So Girls recommended on Amazon I think it's six pounds and it's basically just like all your notes um, for the pattern so I had to lengthen mine by three inches um narrow hem instead of um turning up up the fabric for the hem so narrow hem on the overlocker is what i did i added the side ties which i said already and i've made a note for myself that the side ties have to be six inches down from my armpit area and that's a good um that's my natural waist which is nice um and that's it really oh yeah the other thing as well when i was um when i was cutting out i thought i cut out very well and uh, but when I was putting the pieces together, for some reason, um, the first very first one I did, which is this leopard print one, the front was longer by about an inch. And I thought that's odd. So anyway, I you have to let it hang overnight uh, for the fabric to drop. And then you're supposed to then trim it and finish it off. Um, funnily enough, despite me doing that, there was no difference from when I had made it to when I had let it hang overnight. So for the, my subsequent ones, I didn't bother hanging it. And I just hemmed it then and there. So the first one, as I say, had an inch on both sides of the front panel on the front piece. And I just cut that off and I thought that was a bit weird. So then I went back to my pattern pieces and I matched them up together, the front and the back. And they were a perfect match. And so I thought, oh, maybe I just cut it out wrong. So then for my subsequent ones, oddly, the front piece again was longer by an inch. But only one side. So this side was fine, but this side wasn't matching up. And then I thought maybe because it is cut in the bias, I might have stretched it, stretched it out a bit. Or maybe the fabric was moving on the cutting mat as I was doing it. I still don't know why that's happened, but I just trimmed it off and uh, finished off the seams um, with the overlocker. Um, and so, yeah, that was a bit odd. Um, but there you go. What else was I going to say? Yeah. So I really, really liked it so much so that as soon as I'd made it, I cut out another one and then another one and then another one. So I will show you my other versions. This is the second one that I made. Uh, for those of you that follow me, you will recognize this is again a Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn um, fabric. It's just a rust polka dot viscose. Um, so it's exactly the same view A with the skinny straps, the cowl. So that's the cowl there. And from the side view, so sort of that's the cowl, but then it drops lovely and nice there. Uh, again, same ties, and I'll pop up a picture of myself wearing it. And then the third one I made, um, this is a viscose from my, um, Stitch and Ink. So I did use to subscribe to the Stitch and Ink subscription boxes. And this was one of the fabrics that they gave me. I got two and a half meters and I had a little bit left over, but not really enough to make anything for myself um, because I think this pattern takes two meters. So I've got half a meter. Maybe I could make something for the children. I'm not sure. So yeah, exactly the same thing. Cow neck, beautiful drapey viscose um there you go and i'll pop up a picture again and then having used up all sort of my stash fabric or sort of my inexpensive fabric i thought i really like it let me get out the big guns <laughs> well it's not really big guns lady mcelroy let me get out the lady mcelroy and so this is i have got this fabric already i made a penny dress a sew over it penny dress years ago um i don't like that dress anymore so i'm hoping to cut up the skirt into something else and um, but i did buy a couple of extra meters to make this dress so it's the hydrangea cotton lawn from lady McElroy fabric i mean look at that print it's just so summery so beautiful vibrant i love florals i love pinky colors i'm very girly in that sense and um, but unfortunately this dress is a fail because it's a cotton lawn, the fabric isn't drapey enough. So as you can see, this bit here um, doesn't drape. Um, from the side, you can see it sticks out. Um, and it's just, um, and oddly enough, because um, even though it's cotton the bias, the bust kind of is, um, you know, when you've got the lines across your apex, that means I think that the, the bust is too too tight, the bodice is too tight. So that shows up very much so in, in this dress. And so it is such a shame. So I um and it just feels a bit stiffer as well when I'm when I'm wearing it. Um so what I've decided to do is I am making a Heather blazer in collaboration with a couple of friends, um, Adele Sew for Serenity, Claire from Stitch Hem Sew and Teresa from um lost my thread sorry so we're making a heather blazer together i believe that's next month and i'm making mine in a lovely linen color 
a linen sorry 100% linen I believe I'm going to choose this one or I've got a lighter version as well and I think I will cut this up to make the lining and I think that will go really nicely to actually should I take it out let me take it out so it's like a um, dark dusty pink and then I think that lining would go really really nicely together so I'm just going to line the the back and the front but the arms I'm just I'm going to use um, slippery fabric slippery lining fabric because I have um, lined a coat previously in cotton lawn because I just love the pop of color in the and the design and um, but with the arms it's, it is difficult to get into I mean I knew that already I, I read lots of reviews saying try to use slippery fabric for the arms um, because you will have difficulty getting in and I didn't listen but anyway so that's what I plan to do with that so that will be rescued that fabric will be rescued so that's that's not bad I will pop up a picture it doesn't look too bad from afar but from the side as I say the cowl just sticks up so it's really a bit odd let me just show you again sorry so this cowl part here just sticks up sticks out so this bit here just sort of sticks out and it almost looks like when you're looking down into the dress it almost looks like a bib <laughs> so it's a shame because the print is beautiful um but it, it does yeah so it doesn't work in cotton lawn so definitely viscose is anything with viscose so i guess viscose 12 viscose linen 100 percent viscose also satins and silks and um, if you wanted to do that that would work lovely but nothing Nothing heavier than that, I don't think, would work uh, very well. And also with regards to viscose twills, I think that would be nice going into the winter, um, you know, to have like maybe like a turtleneck underneath or even like a, puss a long sleeve pussy bow blouse with a viscose twill Sicily slip dress. I think that would look quite nice with tights and boots. So um, I have kind of stopped making them for a while because I've moved on to another pattern, but perhaps I could revisit it for a winter make. I'm not sure, but there you go. Let me know what you think about that. Um, and yes, what else have I been up to? I have been buying quite a bit of fabric because um, there has been a lot of sales going on at the moment. All of the summer sales, Sherwood's had the amazing discount, 20% off, Lush Cloth, um, the Fabric Revival, Rainbow Fabrics, Kilburn, um, Pound Fabrics is always cheap anyway. But today I thought I would share with you my um, first order from Sherwood's Fabrics and also from Jenny Stitches. They had a summer sale as well and one piece of of um, fabric from Pound Fabrics and then the rest I will try and stagger across my other my other vlogs for you. So first and foremost, Sherwood's. Um, Sherwood's um, stock quite a lot of Lady McElroy. In fact, I think that's their major line, Lady McElroy fabrics. I think they were doing 20% off everything, including remnants. So that was very exciting. I love Lady McElroy fabrics. I love their prints, their colors. I'm very much a floral person. And they do have a lot of florals on there. So first and foremost, I bought this beautiful, I don't know what the names are called, unfortunately, but I will link down Sherwood's below. It's this amazing, wow, it's actually really bright on the screen. So it's like a jade green with these beautiful florals, red and purples. This is a lawn. This is a lovely lawn. I was going to make a Sicily slip dress out of this, but now having tried it with the other cotton lawn, I'll have to revisit what I'm going to make. Uh, but lawn works really, really nicely for lots of other dresses. Um, a shirt dress, um, like the Lyra, for example, or um, the penny dress from Sew Over It, or blouses, it works well for sagebrush top, the patina blouse, um, the Anthea, and Alan Anthea blouse, so that would work quite nicely. So I've got some a lovely lawn, three meters of that. Uh, the next thing I bought was, um, I have got this fabric already. So I did take a video of me unboxing this, but my daughter was in the background just giving all these comments. Some of them were good, some of them were not so good. And I was trying to do, you know where you do a reel where you've got music in the background, but you can still hear the... Um, the, the voices through through the reel through the music but then it was just it was, it was quite a bit of a faff doing these reels i'm too old to be learning learning new things tech wise but anyhow when she saw this fabric she was like mama you already have that fabric and i said but it's on a different base darling so i have this lovely um life in venice fabric sorry it's a bit creased so i have got this in the linen chambray i have made a um uh 
Ali, Ali Olsen Highlands wrap dress. I could pop up a photo as well of that for you. And I love that dress. I think it's beautiful. It's elegant. It's comfortable. I love the base. So I really love this print. And I bought it in the Visco Chalet this time. So Visco Chalet, this would work well for a slip dress, but I'm not going to make a slip dress out of this. I was thinking maybe the indigo with puffy sleeves or um, oh, the sew over it Ada dress or Ida dress, um, a Stylark Bell dress. Um, so these, these are the dress patterns that I have already. Some I have made, some I haven't, but I thought that was lovely. And I just love the colours in that. I love the print. Very beautiful. Three metres of that. So that's a Visco Chalet. Uh, and then um, they had their, I think it's quite a recent um, design exclusive i think are all the lady mccurroy's exclusive designs i think so so this was their diamond floral design and it's like a dark navy background with florals in sort of a diamond shape pattern so that's really really nice this is really really beautiful i think that it normally retails at around 16 pounds something um, but I think it's quite a good one in the sense that you could either use it for an autumn winter make or even a spring summer make because of the flowers Autumn winter because of the colors, but I mean, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make with this yet The only thing with this because it's got the lovely diamond pattern I need to find a pattern where there's minimal disruption to the to the fabric So I was thinking again the sew over it Ada dress I'll pop up a picture because all you have the, the skirt is straight I think and then you just have gathers under the bust, so the bodice is, is plain as well. So I think that would look quite nice. Otherwise, the indigo, Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress, the long version, that would look really nice because all you have is the waist um, interruption, everything else, and then you can you know display the fabric as much as you want. So that's a, a lawn, very beautiful. And then the last thing, oh no, not the last thing. Oh, this is luxury. So um sherwoods um on their instagram they did a post about all of their uh, fabric designs that um depicted nature so the life in venice was of venice then you had like a tokyo one i believe with like the the, the colorful buildings then you had like a river one uh, you had um like a hut huts and um huts and countryside then you had like a palm tree one and then there was also i think there's a paris one as well um, and this one was, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's the city. It's lovely. Let me show you. Right way up. So it's a lovely sort of, it probably is like a Parisian sort of, you know, you've got little cafes there, people sitting down, you've got bikes. Um, I can't really see as I'm showing it to you, but let me just show you that there. Um, but unfortunately, well, I'm not sure if it's unfortunate or not. And um, they only had it in one base. And I think it would have been nice in like a viscose or like a linen. Uh, they had it in one base. Um, and the base was amazing. It's 70% silk, 30% cotton. And I just thought, I've never bought silk before. I've never bought, bought to Lady McElroy silk. I love the print. I'm going to get it because it was 20% off. Um, and there you go. So I'm holding it up um, folded. But I will show you the single layer of it. It, it is sheer, so you would need to line it. How am I going to hold this up? I'll get it from the other side. So it is sheer. You can see me behind that. But it's beautiful. It's The handle is amazing. It's soft. It's luxurious. Um, so it's 70% silk, 30% did I say cotton? I think it's cotton. Uh, now, having, having bought it and having received it and having looked at it it is lovely the print is lovely the base is lovely it's gorgeous however i think with this kind of fabric it's more for sort of like evening wear or very dressy formal wear i think um i could easily make um a, ra a, a slip dress under this it would have to be unfortunately the salt water slip because i cut you wouldn't be able to have a cow neck underneath another dress it would just look odd so you would have to have the flat um neckline um, but I think the print actually doesn't work well as a um, as a um, sort of formal formal wear I don't think because the print is very casual it's very you know daytime summery but the fabric base is very occasion wear for me so that's kind of like an oxymoron two different things coming together so I'm not quite sure what to do with it I guess I could make like 
you know, like a daytime occasion outfit, like maybe like a, an, um, a guest wedding outfit, not that I have any more weddings to go to. But if you could help me out, I don't know what I could do with this. Um, I'm not, you know, keen to do it ASAP or anything, but any pattern suggestions for sort of a daytime occasion where this beautiful silk cotton mix um, can be used with like a slip dress underneath. I'd be very grateful. So there you go, that's that one. And then the last one I got was a linen, um, a linen chambray from Lady McElroy. Um, unfortunately, it didn't look as nice in real life um, as it did on screen. So I will show you. It does look very um, sort of curtain-like, very um, country cushion-like. Um, the colours are actually looking nicer on screen, so in real life it's actually quite a dull colour. I mean, it is nice on there. The florals are lovely, but in real life it just seems a bit washed out, the colour. Um, and again, it's kind of not too, not too wintry, but not too summery either. So again, I'm not really sure what I could do with that. So any suggestions for sort of a linen... A linen mix fabric in that floral would be great thank you very much um, and that's all that I bought from Sherwoods um, so a lot to think about there um, and yes um, tell me what you think tell me if you have any pattern suggestions for those I'd love to hear your suggestions um, and then the next place I bought some fabric from was Jenny Stitches Fabrics. So I am a blogger for them um, and I always like to support small businesses, especially those um, where I know the owners because it's just nice because it's nice. So Jenny's helping me out with the blogging um, um, post that she's given me and I'd like to think that I'm helping her out by shopping from her um, shop as well. So I have bought some lovely um, cotton jersey. I don't know if it's organic or not. Um, but it's this lovely stripe in a blue but if you look closely it's watercolor so you can see sort of the sort of watermarks there all different shades of blue I just bought two meters of this cotton jersey again I am thinking the Tabitha t-shirt dress but I am open to suggestions I could just make some tops as well or I'm not sure but anyway some suggestions from some cotton jersey all the um, Westcliff dress by Friday Pattern Company, which is a a, um, a knit wrap dress that would work quite nicely. Although I won't have enough. This is only two meters. I don't think I'll have enough. Oh, I would have enough if I made a shorter version. So that could be an option. But let me know what you think. And then I bought some lovely lilac chambray. It feels a bit stiff at the moment, but I assume once I've washed it. So it's sort of, um, I don't know if you can see that color very well. It's a very pale lilac-y color. It's looking a bit blue there, but it's just a chambray. Um and that was from jenny stitches fabrics thank you very much jenny and then last but not least for this vlog anyway i bought a linen mix from pound fabrics and um i'll show you this one here so it's a lovely floral again um a lovely you can see the linen texture there white base with navy roses and i just think that looks really really lovely that's so me um, the colours and the florals and linen is always lovely as well. So for this I'm planning to do either the Jennifer Lauren Kinfolk dress, I'll pop up a picture, or um, that was really what I had in mind. If there's any other suggestions then please let me know. Um, I could do, I don't know. Anyway, I haven't made the Jennifer Lauren one yet and I do have the pattern so I'm hoping to make that as soon as I can with this. Very excited about that. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention was, oh, so again, Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl, also actually Judy from Running So and So suggested these project bags, which is, this is an A3, no, this is an A2 size, or an, yeah, an A2 size, I believe, from Amazon. Lovely, um, sturdy project bags, um, where you, once you've cut out a project, you know, just put it all in here, pattern pieces, cut out pieces all together. This is currently my Sew Over It Eve dress, which is my blogger project for Jelly Stitches in there. But I think it's a lovely idea, for example, if you wanted to batch cut, um, like Sicily slip dresses, or which I did, um, or my Tabitha t shirt dresses, I did those in batch. Um, if you just had a session where you were just cutting out, put them all into separate project bags. So now and again, when you just feel the need uh, to be creative, you can just pop a project bag, pick it up, everything's in there, and you can just get to sewing straight away rather than thinking, oh, 
I want to sew but I can't be bothered at this moment in time to, to cut out so it's all done for you. Also when you're having a bit of a low sojo or you're disappointed with the recent make you can just pop, get a bag like a lovely easy t-shirt it's all ready for you already um, to be sewn up so that's a really great idea. The other thing um, that I have are these um, I bought these uh, mailing tubes um, I've got quite a few of them I bought them probably a couple of years ago now um, for the purpose of putting my pattern pieces in so I do have pattern envelopes that I um, bear with me I do have pattern envelopes um, which I just make folders to make my PDF patterns so this is the um, True Buyer Shelby which I still haven't made and all my pattern pieces are in here but then when I cut them I find that I tend to roll them up because where I've traced them onto um, dressmaking tracing paper that it comes rolled up so I tend to roll them up and then I just have them sticking around in my in my sewing room so what I decided I have a lot of these and I use these as my I put my pattern pieces in here all rolled up it's all neat and tidy and then I just stack them up in a box under my shirt under my desk and then I buy these little tags um, just from Amazon little string you can buy them from anywhere really and just some elastic bands um, and this says um, Tabitha t-shirt dress Tilly and the buttons and so that's how I keep my patterns together um, and then my so that's my PDF no they're not my PDF they're just my cutout patterns traced patterns or even cutout patterns I put in here just thought I'd, I'd, I'd share that with you um, and then obviously I've got the project bags um, and that's it really and um, that is a long one isn't it gosh 35 minutes I've also just recently received my um, so Hayley Jane luxury box for this month so please do check out my channel for any other vlogs that you might be interested in interested in um, and yes the last thing actually which I didn't mention I bought this a month ago but it is the um, Secret Life of a Seamstress. I was watching, I am uh, obviously follow her. She's lovely, Sally. And not only does she, is she great at sewing, but she also knits a, a whole lot. And she had made this cardigan called the Whitmore cardigan, I believe. I hope I have it to hand. I'm not sure if I do. So it's a lovely cardigan and I just fell in love with it and I bought exactly the same colorway that she has. Um, and it come, I bought mine, however, from a different store because it was slightly cheaper. The wool warehouse it comes in a little organza bag and i bought all the supplies and i'm going for this color here bamboo it's like a blush pink um color and it's in their bamboo and cotton um double yarn double knit and then i bought all the needles and things as well i do have the pattern but i don't have it to hand i'll pop up a picture um and of sally's one as well i mean it's it's gorgeous it's beautiful and then i've bought all the all the needles and things as well there so i haven't yet started it because i know with all knitting patterns the beginning part is the hardest to get sort of used to the patterns to get used to the tension that sort of thing and i find at the moment sewing is my current um pastime that i enjoy doing so but i'm thinking maybe when uh, autumn winter comes that's nice to sort of just knit whilst you're maybe watching tv or just sitting down you know just having you know if you've got a couple of spare minutes you just sit down on the sofa and quickly get some some rows in so i will hopefully start that at some point this year and um, but i've got lots of plans and it's just um yeah anyway um, I digress. I'm, I'm rambling on here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, hopefully that was interesting for you. Please do let me know if you have any suggestions for the fabrics that I have shown you. Please comment below. I would love to hear from you. Um, and I will link all of Judy's um, posts and links below. Um, please do follow us on Instagram as well. Myself, Judy, running so-and-so and myself at my social thread. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for all my subscribers. Thank you for, very much for everybody that's just spending their time watching me it's really really great i think i'm currently on almost 1300 subscribers so thank you thank you so much uh, in the meantime i will see you next time uh thank you bye bye too much thank yous there but thank you bye bye <laughs>